Hey, what's up everyone? Here with the Unimog 425 build project that I've been working on for the last uh, several weeks now. I would have had this done earlier, but with my uh, crazy hours at work and uh, me sleeping all the time because I worked six days a week and uh, just slept all during the day and what time I did have to work on it, I didn't feel like doing it because I had other things that I had to take care of. Uh, but uh, I'm almost completely done with the project. I know I said that in my previous video that I was almost done with it. Uh, but I had to do some other modifications uh, to the chassis to uh, get this vehicle to run. Now I talked about the steering where I didn't have maximum turnability going. I think it was right. I have it going left, but not right. Uh, after a few hours, well, not hours, but after a few times of playing around with the uh, the uh, steering system and the servo and everything, I finally got it pretty much straightened out. I did cut away some little plastic pieces here on the, the knuckles itself to increase more uh, turn ability. So it's going to be as it's, it's good as it's going to get, okay? Uh, I have to realize that this is not my SEX-10. Uh, my SCX-10 is just crazy awesome, great uh, throttle experience, uh, great throttle response, and great steering on it. This is a totally different type of kit here. Uh, so it's not going to be like the old SCX-10, which is right up here on the shelf back there. Uh, so I have to realize that it's not going to drive the same, it's not going to perform the same. Uh, but yeah. Now another issue that I ran into was with the battery tray. The uh, kit, I'm not exactly sure when this typical kit came out, when the CCO one came out. I know on the chassis here it says 1993. I'm not exactly sure if that's you know the year that this thing was made or the kit was made. I'm not exactly sure. If you guys know, comment down below. Let me know when this kit actually did release on the market. Uh, so one of the problems I was having was the battery tray because uh, the battery tray was actually made for the old nickel hydrate metal batteries, these right here, all right, the little stick batteries, and I have plenty of these laying around. Now, I can still use these in it, but uh, here's the thing, between running the vehicle and using my sound system, which is uh, right over here, actually, my RC sound system, so I get that realistic uh, truck fit sounds and stuff like that. Uh, with all this being plugged into this battery, it drains it down quick. I had like 5-10 minutes of actually run time because I was testing it out and it only lasted 5-10 minutes. So they're saying that this is not going to not gonna handle it. So I need to put a LiPo battery in here. So I don't know how other people with the Unimog or the uh, CCO1 chassis are doing it. I really hadn't done too much research. I usually do research on, on stuff I get or whatever, but I really hadn't done too much research on that, on how to put a LiPo onto it. Because like I said, the battery tray is formed for the nickel hydrate melt batteries. Now right here in the battery department, which I'll show you guys right here, as you see I got my LiPo battery here. Now. The electronic tray where, it's, where you mount your electronics actually sits right up here. Like, well, like this, okay. <laughs> One way it sits like this, okay? If you guys can see that, I'm sorry if you, uh, you're having trouble seeing that. Might need to bump up the ISO to allow some more uh, light in here. There we go. All right. All right. So, the tray here, as you see, is just shaped as a nickel hydrate metal battery as well. So what I have to end up doing is two solutions to fix this issue right here. All right, first off, I could trim away on the chassis a little bit, which I've already had and done for the LiPo battery now, so it slides in there, all right? Now, I have to trim the bottom piece of the electronic tray here, if you guys can see that, okay? And uh, then I have to uh, mount it and see if it will mount over onto the original mounting screws, all right? Uh, if that does not happen, then my next solution is to move the electronics to the rear of the vehicle, guys. You see that here? So uh, what I'll have to end, do, end up doing is I have to cut out these little studs right there, if you guys can see these little studs down there. 
and hopefully the camera it will might not focus so I have to switch this to manual mode to focus it there we go okay so as you see little studs right here I have to cut those out and place my electronics there which I have uh, put them up to, you know put them up against there to see if it would work and it will work it was not a bad idea if this doesn't work out so hopefully it will work out guys uh, so yeah so that's the only uh, issue I'm having right now, only thing I'm doing right now. And uh, yeah, there we, go. Uh, there we go. Better add a little, little light into the camera. So yeah, so far guys, it's coming well. It's going good. Hopefully I'll have it out on the trails maybe this past, uh, this, this weekend maybe. <laughs> As if the weather clears up. It's been raining here for the last uh, few days now, four or five days now it's been raining. So just really hadn't uh, been able to do any RC in at all. But yeah, so guys, uh, yeah, that's all I have to say on here. So hopefully I can get this squared off and get this thing out there on the trails because I really want to see it out there and see how well it's going to perform. Uh, I think it might do pretty well. I'm not exactly sure on that. Okay, so uh, and uh, yeah, all right. Well guys, thanks for watching. Please like, share, comment, and uh, subscribe to the channel as well. And I will see y'all in the next upcoming video. Hopefully it'll be the run video of the Mercedes-Benz Unimog 425 from Tamaya. <laughs> Alright, well guys, see y'all later.